Good afternoon, beautiful people, believers in God, and those that are still questioning and trying to find their peace within the Father's kingdom. I know we live in a world that's very difficult, a world that has so much temptation, a world that lies to us in lieu of who is actually governing the world in this present time. We know that our true father watches far, far away, hoping that we make the right choice, hoping that in lieu of the gift that he provided by giving us his only son to cleanse our sins with his holy blood, he hopes that our minds will become righteous he hopes that we will honor his commandments and live not based on our flesh, but live based on his heart and his desires. For he bought us at a price and we belong to him. I must say that once you accept the mind of God, the task becomes easier. But until you surrender completely, and abolish your ego and abolish, abolish your fleshy needs. You will continue to serve the other master. And to serve the other master is to live in darkness, depression, anxiety, is to live in hopelessness and helplessness. For it's only through our father that you will find peace the courage and the strength to live by the way of the spirit. I would like to share with you a few of the scriptures that I found today regarding righteousness and how important it is to live life as such. Because this mere existence is but a speck in the sand, but your spirit is eternal. Where would you like to spend that eternity in? Being damned, lonely, constantly depressed. See, what you see here is just a glimpse, that anxiety, that depression, that angst that you're constantly feeling. That's a prelude of what's to come, but tenfold when you're shackled to the enemy. But freedom can be yours, but you must allow the mind of Christ to enter you in order for that eternal bliss in the kingdom of God to be yours. So let's take a look here. James 1 22 says, but he, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at the natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance and preserves, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person Religion is worthless. So if you are not following or abiding by God's laws and you're deceiving your heart by the messages that the enemy is providing you, then your religion is worthless. And whatever it is, this new age belief that you're following this own self, I don't know what to call it. You're just creating your own belief system. It's not going to help you at all. Colossians 3, 5 says, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Let's repeat that one again. Colossians 3, 5, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, 
impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. It doesn't matter if you read that particular verse in unison with the whole chapter. I think it speaks very clear. You could try to attempt to justify your life's action. But Father clearly speaks against sexual immorality, against your impurities, against your own passion and your evil desires. Very, very simple. You know, Philippians 4, 8, 9 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. He's trying to tell you, be like me. That's why he came here, to show you the way. And then he even showed you how he sacrificed his life himself for you. Why can't you do that for him? Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I can attest to that because I have the most wonderful peace that I've never had in my entire life. I never found that peace in the lesbian lifestyle. I never found that peace as a transgender man. You can't have peace. I don't know who you're kidding. It's not some special potion that one's more trans than the other, one's cis and the other's not. No, no. If you're true to yourself, you'll know that that peace will never be yours living a lie because you're going against Father's will. Because no man can ever become a woman and no woman can ever become a man, no matter what surgeries, no matter what hormones you take, you are living a lie and you are living in sin. So let's see here. Galatians 5, 16, 26 reads, but I say, walk by the spirit, not by your fleshy suit, but by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. See, if you walk by the spirit, you won't have any desires of the flesh. I promise you, that's what happened to me. It's not that I was not trans enough. It's not that I was not gender dysphoric enough, whatever that means. It's that I learned to walk by the spirit. In my learning how to walk by the Spirit, I have no desires of the flesh. And that's the name of the game. That is what Father wants from you. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. Do you see how that works? If you're leading your life with desires of the flesh, that is against the Spirit. So you're doing things against Father, against the Holy Spirit, and against the Christ, the one who came down and spilled his blood for your sins. And the desire of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. Do you see? There's another chapter that talks about desires of the flesh, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand the Bible, but it does take a pure heart to want to learn and to want to listen to what Father has to tell you. Revelation 22, 11 through 12 says, let the evildoer still do evil and the filthy still be filthy and the righteous still do right and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. In other words, you will be judged. You will repay for what you've done. You can't get around it. I wish you could, but you can't. So I will continue to pray that the veil gets removed and that you get to see the truth. In Hebrew 13, 18 says, pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience desiring to act honorably in all things. Ah. Oh.
Ephesians 5, 8, for at one time you were darkness, but now you're a light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. He came so that you could be pure, so that you could walk in the light, so you could be like him. Please follow his laws, his commandments. Don't just throw around the word love just to fit your needs. I pray, as a matter of fact, let's go into prayers right now. Dear Father, I know that many, many are lost in this world and not to any fault of yours because you have given us, Father, so many wonderful gifts and chances and even gave us your son so that we can be cleansed. But the enemy continues to work on people's minds and hearts and continues to want to create a family feud to divide us and separate us. Father, please have mercy with the ones that live in this world that bring you shame, the ones that live only for their own desires and not for yours. Please continue to work on their hearts, Father, so that they too can be part of the light family, so they too can live in peace and harmony with you and the rest of the family. I pray, Father, that their hearts will open to your message, that that veil becomes removed, and that, Father, that they will finally get down on their knees for forgiveness and seek your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and go for a walk. Obviously, I'm going to get rid of this beautiful outfit that I purchased yesterday on the thrift shop. My mom loved it, by the way. She was in, in such joy. And for all you out there that have hurt your mothers and they have a broken heart, try to think once beyond yourself. Try to think about how they feel the woman who carried you nine months in their wound, who glorified the day that you were born, who raised you and loved you, but you slapped them in the face by telling them that no, they made a mistake, that you weren't the person that they thought you are. I say repent. I say live for the ones you love, not for yourself and that kingdom will be yours forever. All right, guys, I love you, but remember to always love yourselves too. Bye-bye.